Recently, Chinese scientists discovered something interesting on the moon, an unusual crystal. Moreover, they found out that this crystal contains an element that can literally replace nuclear fuel. Let's find out more. The composition of the moon has long remained a mystery to us. Half a century has already passed since the Apollo mission. Unfortunately, we haven't traveled to the moon much since then, so it's not surprising that it's not so easy for us to study it. But recently, we've made a breakthrough in this area. In December 2020, Chinese scientists sent the Chang'e 5 probe to the moon. The mission was named after the ancient Chinese deity of the moon, Chang'e. Quite poetic, isn't it? Anyway, after the probe went to the nearest side of the moon, it spent several days digging through the surface and rocks and then returned to Earth. In total, it collected about four pounds of various lunar rocks, like basalt, solidified lava, and so on. And yeah, maybe it doesn't sound too impressive, but it's actually a mini breakthrough. After all, we hadn't received any lunar samples since 1976. And these samples are very important for learning the history of our world. We've been struggling for many years to find out, for example, how the moon was born at all. Yes, there were a lot of theories, but we still couldn't find any proper evidence for any of them. But thanks to the latest missions and some computer simulations, scientists finally found out the truth. The moon was born when some random dwarf planet crashed into our Earth many millions of years ago. This dwarf planet was slightly smaller than Mars. The fragments of the Earth went into space, but some of them stayed in our orbit. Then they stuck together and formed the Moon. It sounds horrifying, but in reality, the birth of the Moon was the best thing to ever happen to our planet. If it weren't for this beautiful satellite, all our oceans would be small puddles. Life wouldn't have appeared on Earth at all. So this is already an amazing discovery. But that's still not all. Studying the collected rocks, scientists from the Beijing Research Institute discovered something unusual, a rare lunar crystal. Looks pretty boring, doesn't it? Just some tiny transparent monocrystal about the thickness of a human hair. We've already found such things on the moon before. These crystals were formed as a result of volcanic activity, just like some garnets on the Earth. And yep, the place where they discovered these crystals also suffered from volcanoes 1.2 billion years ago. That means that this tiny baby is over a billion years old. But that's not the most important thing. It's the fact that this crystal is made of a unique material, the one that we've never seen before. Researchers from the International Mineralogical Association have confirmed that such a composition can't be found anywhere on Earth. The crystal was named Chang'e-site, again after the same moon deity. And this is another achievement. This is the sixth previously unknown mineral that we've found on the moon and the first one found by China. Now, it has become the third country in the world to make such a lunar discovery. However, this tiny crystal still wasn't the only remarkable thing they found. After studying this gem and about 140,000 other lunar particles, scientists have discovered something else. They found helium-3. Why is it so important? Because this is one of the elements that feed the sun and other stars in our universe. We tend to say stuff like, put out the sun, the sun is burning, and so on. And this is one of the reasons why many people actually think that the sun is a huge fireball. But it's not. Its burning is actually a completely different process, which is called nuclear fusion. The process itself is quite simple. During this reaction, hydrogen in the star turns into helium. But this simple process is actually one of the most violent and insane reactions in the universe. There's a real boiling broth of particles inside the sun. The hydrogen nuclei that jump and rush there are constantly repelling each other since all of them are positively charged. And so they could continue to boil and chill around without bothering anyone if it weren't for the stars. The stars turned out to be cheaters. They have such strong gravity that they basically grab billions of these little atoms and squeeze them together. Combining with each other, these atoms create new heavy elements, like the mentioned helium. 
And when this happens, they throw a lot of energy into space. And that's how the sun burns. At the same time, it spreads so much energy that we can't even imagine. Okay, so what is helium-3? Well, this is an element to which even the sun can say, whoa dude, you should calm down. The fusion of helium-3 atoms releases even more energy than in typical nuclear fusion. And most importantly, it doesn't pollute the atmosphere with harmful things like radiation. We have very, very little helium-3 on Earth. Its prevalence in our atmosphere is about one in a million. And besides, it's constantly trying to escape from us back into space. Probably feel some bad vibes from us. However, scientists have recently found out that there's a place that contains a lot of this element. Yep, you guessed it, it's the moon. We think that there's more helium-3 on the moon than on Earth because of the solar winds. The sun has been hammering on the moon with its helium-3 for billions of years, so now it's all over the place. It's still not too much if you compare it, for example, with Jupiter or Saturn. But don't forget how much energy it can release. For your information, with only 25 tons of helium-3, it's possible to provide America with energy for an entire year. Now, there are 35,000 tons of it here on Earth and more than a million tons on the moon. Only these sources could feed the entire US for thousands of years. So basically, in the future, helium-3 may become a new source of fuel. And it's better than nuclear fuel in basically everything. Helium-3 won't leave any harmful waste and radiation. It's more powerful and not that dangerous. In other words, this environmentally friendly and efficient energy could be a revolution for our planet. Sounds cool, huh? So, what are we waiting for? Grab the shovels, you might say. But there's a little problem here. Unfortunately, we haven't yet come up with anything as wildly strong and hot as the stars. To use helium-3, we need crazy temperatures and pressure. We need a thermonuclear reactor, and we have no idea how to build it. Yet. And even if we could heat it up to such temperatures and get the needed pressure, we still don't really know how to handle helium-3 correctly. Therefore, even if we have an infinite amount of helium-3, we still won't be able to use it. But still, there's a great power behind helium-3, so it's not surprising that different countries have already started a race for nuclear resources. Now that Chang'e 5 has discovered a new helium-3 deposit on the nearest side of the moon, this race can become downright global. For example, China already plans a new lunar mission in 2024, Chang'e 6. During this mission, they want to collect the first samples from the far side of the moon. As you can see, finding this lunar crystal was very important for us. These crystals can help us find new ways to create helium-3. And if we manage to do that, humankind will enter a new era. But to do this, we still have to solve a number of problems. How to deliver a bunch of these lunar crystals to Earth, how to make them produce energy, and so on. Let's hope that in the future these issues will be resolved and we'll find a way to produce clean, safe, unlimited energy. This catapult-like system on the moon might bring us limitless energy. It's a launch system concept that was recently proposed by the Chinese scientists. It would work like a hammer throw, spinning a launch arm that flings objects. This arm is supposed to be about 165 feet long. It will accelerate until it reaches the moon's escape velocity, and then whoosh, the capsule is sent into space. This crazy idea will cost around $18 billion. Ooh, pricey. But trust me, it's totally going to be worth it. The system would be powered by solar panels and nuclear energy. It could also recover more than 70% of the energy used after each launch. The moon has a very weak gravity. There's also barely any atmosphere, so the air doesn't weigh you down. This makes it so much easier to launch stuff there. But why do we even need this? The main purpose is to transport helium-3. It's a really cool isotope of helium, and one of the most insane things about it is that it could become fuel for nuclear fission. 
This is the same process that happens in stars, including our Sun. If we manage to recreate nuclear fusion here, on Earth, we can make it a clean and basically limitless source of energy for power plants. But helium-3 is super rare on Earth. We can sometimes find it in volcanic rock formations on the ocean floor. That's because it's a product of another rare element called tritium, the element we usually make in nuclear reactors and put in cool stuff like glow-in-the-dark paint. But the catch of tritium is that it takes forever to decay and turn into helium-3. Now, there's a bunch of helium-3 on the moon, around 1 million tons. Just 20 tons of helium-3 could meet China's yearly electricity needs. In fact, lunar soil has enough helium-3 to power the entire world for over a thousand years. But why is there so much of helium-3 on the moon and barely none on our planet? Well, that's because helium-3 comes from the sun and travels in solar winds. Solar winds are like streams of dangerous particles. They're super radioactive. Our planet's thick atmosphere and magnetic fields serve as a shield for us. They almost fully protect us from those particles. But unfortunately, they also prevent the good stuff like helium-3 from getting here. The moon's atmospheric shields are super thin though, so it's under a constant shower of solar winds. So, helium-3 accumulated there over billions of years, and now it's just scattered around there. But mining it and bringing back to Earth is no easy feat. It's super expensive. Just think about it. Rockets need tons of fuel to break free from gravity. Every single bolt and screw on the spacecraft must be engineered to survive extreme conditions, like radiation. Not to mention, you need a team of rocket scientists, literally working around the clock to make sure nothing goes wrong. You can't call a repair guy if something breaks on the moon. So generally, it costs about a half a million dollars to send one pound of payload to our satellite. That's based on estimates from NASA. To get some idea, let's calculate how much it would cost to send an apple to the moon. A typical apple weighs about 0.4 pounds, so that funny mission would be at least $200,000. Now, for comparison, the Chinese launch system weighs around 80 tons. Another problem is that the lunar surface is pretty harsh on the equipment, like the freakish lunar dust, for example. You might recall this small thing that happened in the 60s called the moon landings. But when the Apollo astronauts came back from the moon, they found something weird was happening to them. Their throats were sore and their eyes wandered. Luckily, it wasn't some scary moon sickness. Turns out, there's a lot of lunar dust clinging to their spacesuits. This dust seems harmless, but it's made up of sharp and abrasive particles, much smaller than a human hair, yet sharp like glass. It contains silicate, a thing that can cause severe lung problems on Earth and is a common issue for miners. So it caused a lunar hay fever. At least that's how NASA astronaut Harrison Schmidt called it. All 12 astronauts who walked on the moon were then sneezing and experiencing nasal congestion. Sometimes it took days to fade away. The dust even got inside their spacecraft, smelling like burnt gunpowder. This nasty stuff can be harmful to both humans and equipment. It managed to damage spacesuit boots and even ruin the seals on the containers used to bring back samples during the Apollo missions. As we mentioned, they're glass-sharp and jagged, so they start scratching, grinding, and wearing down any surfaces they come in contact with. They don't care if it's metal, glass, or humans. And since there's so much dust, this causes equipment to malfunction and fail quite quickly. And that's just one of the possible hurdles with lunar missions. So scientists really need to come up with some weird ideas to get that precious helium-3. The Chinese Scientist Project looks like a weird sci-fi invention, but it's a cost-effective way to transport materials back to us. It could throw stuff to Earth twice a day, and it would be 90% cheaper than current methods. Since it only needs electricity and no fuel, the system would be small and easy to set up. Besides the beloved Helium-3, this catapult would also help advance technologies in space mining and heavy launch vehicles. No lunar dust scares this thing. It should last for at least 20 years. It would need to be transported to the moon using China's super heavy lift rocket. But the idea is far from new. There was a novel called The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert A. Heinlein. 
In the story, there's a lunar colony that uses an electromagnetic catapult to send weed and water ice back to Earth. It gets quite wild when the colonists, known as loonies, eventually take control of this catapult. They threaten to launch rocks at Earth unless their colony is recognized as an independent world. Sounds kind of funny, but a large rock, if thrown at us from the moon, could wipe out a city. The damage would be like from a meteorite strike, with fires, houses destroyed, and worse. But scientists have been talking about this catapult idea for a while. For decades, they were trying to find a way to use electromagnetic systems to send resources from the moon to Earth. There are also some challenges. For example, scientists forgot to mention how exactly helium-3 would be extracted from the lunar soil. Installing this launch system on the moon's rugged surface would be difficult as well. Also, they would need to make sure that the system remained stable at high speeds and that it could withstand the moon's extreme temperature changes, cosmic rays, and intense solar radiation. So it would take some time to develop. China hopes to have the key components of the system ready by 2030. The full-scale operations might start by 2045. China has tons of plans for the moon. For example, they want to build a research station at its south pole by 2035. But China's not the only one in this space race. Considering that NASA plans to send humans on Mars by that time, oh boy, the 2030s will be a crazy decade for space exploration. There's also an American startup that's part of the lunar economy. Oh, the ones that plan to land astronauts on the moon have people actually living on our satellite in a decade or two. One of the goals of this colony is to boost economic growth and create new jobs. Most of them will likely involve some mining activities. And if there'd be two space colonies, well, they'll have to figure something out. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.